Nothing hurts more than to see an NBA player's talents go to waste. Only thing worse is to see a player with amazing talent be brought down by the weakness or the lack of potential within a team. Unfortunately for these players, that's just the situation. Today, I take a look at 5 NBA players who are trapped on bad teams. Welcome to NBA Insider. In college, Devin Booker was part of a stacked Kentucky team that went 38-0 before taking its first loss of the year to Wisconsin in the Final Four. Carl Anthony Towns was a star on this team that ultimately sent six players to the NBA draft. Still, NBA analysts were stunned when Phoenix Suns took Booker with the 13th pick in the 2015 NBA draft, despite him being on the bench behind the Harrison Twins and even Tyler Eulis as a wildcat. As an 18-year-old rookie, Booker battled for time early on out of a crowded backcourt that already featured fellow wildcats Eric Bledsoe and Brandon Knight. This 2015-2016 team began the year with many troubles including Markeith Morris demanding to be traded, head coach Jeff Hornacek being fired, and Eric Bledsoe blowing out his knee. Booker then suddenly found himself starting for one of the most dysfunctional franchises in the NBA. As a starter, Booker quickly established himself as one of the best shooters in the league and the steal of the 2015 draft. Booker, at 6'6", proved to be a crafty athlete who could create space and score amazingly. Overall, Booker closed out his rookie season by averaging 14 points off of 28 minutes of playing time. This year, 20 year old Booker has upped his game to emerge as a leading scorer on the team at 20 points per game. These 2016 2017 Suns, however, still take the floor with one of the more unbalanced rosters in basketball. The team lacks a traditional point guard with Booker, Knight, and a healthy Bledsoe taking turns dominating the ball out of isolation. Tyson Chandler is now the only veteran interior presence on a team that lacks real organization and often ends up playing pickup ball during games. These Suns rank nearly last in every major defensive category. For Devin Booker to shine, the Suns must dramatically improve from top to bottom. John Wall is arguably the fastest man from end to end in the NBA. At 26 years old, he is having his best season yet after adding a real jump shot to his game this offseason. Wall is now hitting 40% of his 3 point shot attempts, which is a dramatic improvement over his first 3 seasons in the league when he simply refused to elevate in space out on the perimeter. For his sophomore season, Wall went 7.1% from 3. This year, Wall is putting up 24 points, 4 rebounds, and 9 assists as one of the more complete point guards in the game. Wall and the Wizards did take back to back trips to the playoffs between 2014 and 2015. In both years, Washington dominated the first round before collapsing in the Eastern Conference semifinals. In 2015, John Wall wore a cast and watched helplessly from the sidelines as the Wizards dropped three straight playoff games to the Hawks to close out the season. Still, the Wizards brought excitement to Washington since Gilbert Arena squared up and went toe to toe against a young LeBron James in the playoffs. In response, the front office signed Bradley Beal to a maximum contract despite rumors of problems between Beal and Wall. The Wizards are slowly falling off in Washington, and while I'm making this video, the team is currently sitting at a 7-11 and 11 record. From here, the Wizards may sneak into the postseason as an 8th seed only to be blown out in the first round of the playoffs. In my opinion, Wall needs to be traded to another team before everything comes crashing down for Washington because right now, things aren't looking too good. The Marcus Cousins was always the best big man on the floor through the 2016 USA basketball run that resulted in the team receiving gold. Cousins would suddenly transform into a leader and team player when surrounded with elite talent. As a king, Cousins has clashed repeatedly with the likes of George Carl, Rudy Gay, and even Vlad Divac through seven years of losing, draft busts, and political wrangling to keep the team in Sacramento. These kings are arguably the most dysfunctional franchise in all of sports, last making the playoffs in 2006. Still, the amazing talents of Cousins cannot be denied. As a defender, Bo Boogie can hedge out on the perimeter to defend against the pick and roll before rotating back into the paint to contest the shot and control the basketball. After taking a couple of dribbles, Cousins can easily whip a full court outlet pass to his man in stride for an easy transition score. Demarcus Cousins can either abuse his man on the low block or step out to the free throw line and go triple threat. As a triple threat, Cousins can knock down the mid range jump shot, drive the ball past his man, and even take a nice and smooth layup. As a total package, Cousins is now putting up 27 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, and 1 block per game in Sacramento. 
Sacramento. For added measure, the center is even making 33% of his three-point shot attempts and making at least one three-pointer each game. The Kings, however, have ruined the grand opening of their new Golden Center Arena with uninspired gameplay and a total lack of team chemistry. Rudy Gay has already voiced his intent to opt out of his three-year deal this offseason and does play and behave with one foot out the door. The Ty Lawson pickup has also been a disaster with the former UNC standout only putting in a mere six points per game. At this rate, it will only be a matter of time before Cousins leaves the team himself to get paid by a real contender in the 2018 free agent sweepstakes. Who knows, maybe John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins can make a dynamic duel. I would love to see that happen. Joel Embiid missed out on two entire years as a professional because of the broken bone in his foot. Following this injury, many fans and analysts compared this center to the likes of Bill Walton, Yao Ming, and Greg Oden as talented big men who were all destroyed by a series of foot, knee, and leg injuries. However, despite these critics' thoughts, Embiid finally made his introduction on October 26, 2016 and came up with 20 points and 7 rebounds through only 22 minutes of action. By his ninth game, Embiid was racking up 26 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 blocks in only 20 minutes of playing time against the Suns. While showing off his full skill sets, Embiid even completed his very own version of the dream shake in the paint before stepping out behind the arc and going 3 for 5. At this point however, it is still far too early to decide whether Embiid was actually worth the wait, at least to some people. But in my personal opinion, I think Embiid has a bright future further down in his NBA career. What do you guys think? Anthony Davis kicked off the season by dropping an outrageous 50 points, 16 rebounds, 5 assists, 7 steals, and 4 blocks stat line in the season opener against the Denver Nuggets. To follow that up, the Brow went off against the Golden State Warriors to rack up 45 points and 17 rebounds through the second game of his 2016-2017 year. For the season, Davis is averaging 30 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals to go with his league leading 3 blocks per game. On any given night, Anthony Davis is the best offensive and defensive player on the floor. Still, these New Orleans Pelicans managed to drop their first eight games of the season while Davis reinvented the game of basketball. Davis at six foot ten is comfortable turning and facing out on the perimeter and driving to the lane. On the low block, he has already perfected his own series of drop steps, up and unders, and spin moves. After forcing the defense to commit and pack the paint, Davis can simply step out and rain down mid-range jump shots. To top it all off, AD is an 81% free throw shooter, a rare big man who can stay on the floor and control the basketball late in games without fear of getting fouled. Unfortunately, the same thing can be said for his team. Looks like the Pelicans might need to make some changes or things may not look too good for both Davis and the franchise. And that concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little list I composed of players I felt are stuck with teams that aren't good enough for these stars. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If I made any mistakes or missed anything that you felt should have been included, please let me know. Also, if you guys have any recommendations for future videos, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching, NBA Insider.